So I have a uh, keyboard monitor down here if you need to see my hotkeys, but if you're watching this video, I would expect you already know your hotkeys because this is not made for uh, beginners. So let's go with these two sketches, right? I have two sketches. I made one in part design uh, regularly on the uh, XY plane. The next, I made a datum plane parallel to the XY plane offset and uh, offset by 250 millimeters and it's also about 100 millimeters over and 100 millimeters up, right? Now, normally when you do a normal to profile surface sweep or loft, you use a guide curve and the guide curves, and, and th this is also part of the FreeCAD lingo. I should specify that uh, lofting and FreeCAD by what FreeCAD calls lofting is not, I don't think you can use a guide curve at all. So um, in FreeCAD lingo, it's just sweeping. But I use too many platforms to keep it all straight. So uh, when you try to do a sweep in FreeCAD, um, you normally use just a guide curve that goes from one to another, and you need a plane to be able to do that with. Here, you don't have um, points that share the same plane between your centers. So it gets a little bit more involved with lofting or sweeping. So I want to go through a few two strategies to be specific um, on how to get a normal to profile to normal to profile uh, sweep also known as a loft and other platforms in FreeCAD. So let's go with uh, a datum plane. Actually, you know what? I Why don't I just start by sketching on my XZ plane here. So this is a plane where the origin is at the very middle of my sketch and that makes life quite easy, right? So this is method number one on lofting to normal profiles. Uh, so there is vertical and 100, let's say. Uh, we just need a line <laughs> and we'll close that. Let's make a datum plane now. And I just sketched on my XZ plane. So let's highlight that here and make a plane parallel. And now I can offset this in the Z direction. I believe it's uh, 100 with a flipped side. And yep, we're right in the middle of our sketch. So we can say OK there. Feel free to download these models from the GrabCAD account. The link's in the description if you'd like to follow along as well. Let's import these two points because I know that in between these two middle points is dead center of our sketch. I'm going to create another point here and add a symmetric constraint there, right? And I can do the same thing. Now the distance that I make these lines um, in this method uh, does affect the way that my loft looks. So bear that in mind that you can adjust these lines if you need. So I have these two lines that sort of point out normal. And I want to go to the draft workbench and I can do a Bessier curve, right? So I'm going to grab this point and this point. And now, you know, my Bessier curve remains normal to profile at the point that it intersects the profile. We'll grab this second point and then back to our first point. There we have a nice curve uh, that that runs like that. So we're going to exit our sketch, or not exit our sketch, but change our workbench rather to part design. Let's do a sweep here. I want to uh, highlight my initial sketch. You can see it's, I guess it's not turning green, but I highlight my sketch here in the tree. Choose utility to sweep. Let's add an object here, our curve. You can see a pretty nice sweep it is. And then we'll want to go to multi-section. We're going to add our final section here. And if I say OK, um, I'll make a dependent copy this time. You can see we have a little bit of error right there. right? Uh, otherwise, we are normal to profile uh, in every direction. And otherwise, looks exactly how we want, right? Normal to normal, normal to normal, right? No matter what angle we look at it. So how do we address this uh, little error? And that just goes back to whatever we choose for our sweep. So if I right click on here, edit pipe, we want to change our orientation from standard to fixed. And we can see that that eliminates 
right away. So it's pretty amazing that we have a concave outward that ends up being concave inward, and it does so in a very smooth manner. And again, normal to normal, just as we want, right? So that's one way of doing it that I think is pretty good. In fact, let me save this and I'll upload this model to GrabCAD should you want it. And actually, before I'm done here, it may be also fun to uh, edit this a little bit, right? What if I wanted to, um, utility to add a thickness, of course, I need to do this in the right order. So I select these two faces and uh, choose a thickness. And now we're thick at one millimeter. And so now we have kind of a hollow duct work. <clears throat> in fact, if this were just straight, this would almost represent a uh, Jet's mixer nozzle. That's kind of cool. We can always make the thickness outwards if we want our solid to represent the inward geometry, right? So we can just check this box and the thickness goes to the other direction. So it's kind of however you want it to. I'm going to say okay on that, right? So let me upload that uh, just so you have it. Well, yeah, and that's a nice little model. So we're going to save that. Let's, I'm going to do a save as, and let's do another method that's quite similar. Uh, from here, I'm going to get rid of my thickness with the delete key, going to get rid of my curve. Yes, let's get rid of our additive pipe, right? And I'm going to show my initial, there's my datum plane, right? So let's get rid of our reference curve. So we've reround the clocks back to here. So let's save that. <laughs> Next, and this is honestly quite similar uh, what we're going to do here, but I want to create a datum plane. So I'm going to choose this point, this point, this point right there. We got it. I'm going to say OK. And sketching on this plane, I basically created, you know, my own plane that fits the needs that I have. And this should be parametric and connected to these points. So if I change dimensions, this will update. In fact, I th I'd say that uh, if you're going to arbitrarily say how parametric something is, I would go with this way as being a little bit more parametric than the Bessier curve method. I'm gonna, just going to reference both of these points here. And I can add in, and there's several ways to do this. Maybe I'll go the sketch fillet route since I'm not very dimensioned right now, right? So we'll go sketch fillet, and I choose here to here, here to here, and now I can fully constrain. Uh, let me get normal to my profile here just to make sure that I'm using the right references. That's better. Now let's add in a vertical dimension, maybe. 50 millimeters. We'll do the same over here. 50 millimeters. We want this to be vertical. We'll add in a radius here, maybe 20 millimeters. We'll use equal over here, and we're fully defined. We'll close that. And now I can do much the same thing. Spacebar to hide that. We have loft. Or <laughs> see, I uh, I use a lot of platforms, and that lingo is getting to me. So there's our object. We want to sweep along this sketch, but we don't want our object to be the datum plane, right? We want it to be this thing. That's better. I thought something was wrong there. I'm going to hide this again with the space bar. We want to make sure that we have a multi-section. We can add a section here. And it looks like we've got a little bit of prolapse because our radius was too small. It still works, but that is not good form. That would not be manufacturable in any ways. So let's edit our sweep. I'm actually going to get rid of this equal. Shift R will give this 20 millimeter radius, and now I have the flexibility of making this something like 50, 100, 100 millimeters ought to be okay, but 125 for good measure. We'll close that. 
<laughs> it's still too, uh, it's updated, but it's still not good enough. So what is the moral of the story? I guess go with the Bessier curve if you have a, a crazy limitation like this. Or it looks like, you know what, I've updated, I've updated the wrong dimension, right? So let's make this, that's what's going on here. 20, I just discovered that on the fly. 125, that should be way better. Let's close that. Much better, right? And uh, we we can do the same thing. So a Bessier curve is great for nice, uniform, consistent curve. Um, and I suppose I could do two arcs of a constant radius or a spline would also work. So there's there's a lot of interesting ways to do it. And if, if somebody watching this isn't familiar with the spline, I'll just jump in and, and do that real quick, right? So if I, in fact, I'll just box select everything, get rid of my sketch, and uh, I can re-import. And what's going on with my sketch right here? Okay, so you can see how we're rebuilding. This is uh, FreeCAD trying to figure out you know the the new parameters now that I've deleted the whole sketch so we're kinda of stuck thinking about things for a minute here and we had a little crash there my fault I think because um, I uh, destroyed a, a path and FreeCAD couldn't figure out how to do it. So we're going to skip recomputes on this and that way FreeCAD won't have to sit there and think about how to rebuild something when I edit it, right? So uh, that sketch is good. Let's come down here to our path. So I was going to show you how to do um, a spline and uh, splines are fun in FreeCAD. I think they're easy to constrain and uh, and this method might give us kind of a similar t result to the Bessier curve. Let's go with here to here. <laughs> we'll go with our B spline, right? We want a four point B spline. One, two, three, four. And there's our nice gradual, almost Bessier like curve. And we can dimension these, right? So if we want it to be rather consistent. We can give them the same dimension. 15 is way too small. Let's go with 150. Oh wait, that's the small profile there. So maybe we'll give this 150. And that actually, that's probably uniform enough, right? Because we we when we sweep these things, we care about the minimum radius of curvature. And equal lines keep pretty relatively constant radii, even though it, it flattens out over here. When it goes to an inflection point, but that should be fine. We're going to just make sure that we have vertical and vertical and our spline is defined. So we'll close that. And now we'll hit the rebuild button and it recomputes the path, right? So that's the beauty of skip recomputes. It can stop you from having to think about things too much. You know, it's it's when you pull over FreeCAD and say you've had a bit too much to think. <laughs> so there's normal the profile there. Uh, normal profile there so we're normal in both of our views we're looking pretty good so I hope this video was helpful in having kind of two ways of uh, working out uh, these sorts of normal to profile lofts uh, this was again in the part design workbench and I think the part design loft is very conducive to having this uh, work efficiently uh, so that's what I recommend for these kinds of uh, lofts now I can kind of prove out the same thing. I can prove first that I chose the same order of selections there, but also that I can hollow this out. So whether you use a plane or a curve, Bessier curve, they both seem to uh, work very well. Again, one of the advantages of using a plane is uh, I can go to my original sketches, right, sketch 001 should be this big profile here, and if I edit that and make this 125, oh, and uh, we have to think about things, so it just takes a quick second for FreeCAD to update the rest of the features. That's where Skip Recomputes uh, 
you can skip that time there. But as we close that, right, we automatically update, and that's a, a really handy feature. So again, two ways to do this. Hope that was helpful. Um, let's go through a model next time where we use a similar method into something that's actually useful. Uh, so here's a model that I've done uh, this method for, for the spokes. So maybe we can go through making this wheel in a future video. Let me know in the comments if that's something you want to do. Uh, thanks for watching. I hope this video is helpful. If it was, please subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.